All right. So Sam Altman, like you mentioned, just gave another in-depth interview. And this time it was on the Lex Friedman podcast. And they covered everything from the open AI board saga back when Sam got briefly fired to Elon Musk's more current lawsuit to GPT-5. Now, this interview clocks in at nearly two hours long, and it contains some very interesting comments from Altman that we think are worth unpacking. So, Paul, what jumped out to you most during the interview? Uh, it's honestly like hard to narrow this down. It's, I mean, if you look at the timestamps of the interview, I would definitely recommend people go listen to it. I think that it's just so important. You know, I've said it many times in the show. The, one of the ways I learn the most about AI is by listening to the people leading these research firms. And Sam is certainly no different. And, and I think it's important that people understand not only what they're trying to build, like follow the technological aspects of it, but you, you have to understand the human aspects of this. And this was a, a pretty raw interview with Sam, I would say. Like it started right off the first like 10 minutes with his firing. And you can tell that there are significant scars um, sent for Sam mentally. He, he used the, the phrase shockingly painful multiple times to explain what happened. Um, and, and the thing I found kind of sad is he mentioned, I don't know if you caught this, Mike, but like he mentioned how he was a very trusting person mm -hmm. and that this sort of like changed him. Like his default used to be just to trust everyone. And, and you can tell that that is just not the case. So, you know, I think moving forward, just to understand his, his personal mental state, his personal desires, he mentioned at one point, I, I mean, I almost had to like do a double take on this one. He said it in passing and Lex almost like glossed over and then came back to it. But he's like, yeah, I might get shot at some point, basically. Mm, like, yeah. you, did you, I, that was so weird. Like, but you understood what he was saying. Like, he was talking about the significance of what they're doing and how there are a lot of people who don't like necessarily what OpenAI is doing. And they see him as sort of the, the figurehead of it. And so he was basically saying like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, my life is just bizarre. Um, so I thought it was just interesting from a personal perspective. Anyone who's listened to this show knows uh, Ilya Sutskova. We talked about Ilya a lot, one of the you know prominent figures in modern AI, and was uh, on the board at the time Sam was fired. And so you know, to Lex, to his credit, asked all the hard questions, and mm -hmm. he said, you know, what's going on with Ilya? Um, and Sam said he doesn't know what his plans are. You'd have to ask him, but he hopes that they get to work together for the rest of their career. Uh, he asked specifically, what did Ilya see? And Sam said, Ilya did not see AGI. None of us have seen AGI. And there was a lot more about Ilya. So that was one of the main characters in the interview. The other one that was very prominent was Elon Musk. Um, and again, on the personal side, you can tell Sam is just disappointed in how this has played out. Like Elon is someone that Sam has looked up to his whole career. He sees him as a very important person in human history, and he just doesn't understand. His literal quote was, it makes me sad. Like Lex said, um, uh, so the podcast, Elon chose to leave. Okay, so uh, he asked uh, Lex, uh, Lex, who is friends with Elon, asked Sam about you know the whole lawsuit and, and um, why it happened. And Altman confirmed exactly what we said on the podcast, which was that Elon chose to leave OpenAI due to his own desires for AGI and that he wanted to merge OpenAI with Tesla, which is exactly what we had, you know, cited from the New York Times article. And, and then Sam said, like, it just makes me sad. I miss the old Elon. Um, and then it, later on in the interview, toward the end, he said, the amazing stuff about Elon is amazing. And I super respect him. I think we need him. All of us should be rooting for him and need him to step up as a leader through this next phase. So... I don't know. I found, I found that, uh, kind of fascinating. A couple of the other ones that jumped out to me and then I, Mike, I'd be interested to see if there's any other ones that, that caught your attention. He did ask about fair use and copyright, which we mm. talked about last week on the show with Mira, um, the CTO and Sora in particular, Lex said, do you think training AI should be, or is fair use under copyright law? And Sam completely dodged it. He, he said, I think the question behind that question is, do people create valuable who create valuable data deserve to have some way that they get compensated for it. And that I think the answer is yes. And he kind of says it's, it's sort of hard. 
And then Lex specifically asks about Sora and says, but artists and creators are worried when they see Sora. They're like, holy shit. And Sam said, sure, artists were also super worried about photography uh, when it came out. And then photography became a new art form and people made a lot of money taking pictures. I think things that will uh, like that will keep happening. People will use the new tools in new ways. Um, on AI and jobs, sort of on that path, mm -hmm. obviously the last two episodes of this podcast, we've talked a lot about Sam's quote about 95% of what creatives do, you know. And so <clears throat> Lex asked him about jobs. I know there's an interesting answer, and it does align with what he's said previously. He said, people talk about how many jobs is AI going to do in five years. The framework that people have is what percentage of current jobs are going to be totally replaced by some AI doing the job. The way I think about it is not what percent of jobs AI will do, but what percent of tasks will AI do over a time horizon? So you kind of like talk more about the task level. And then that sort of spun into the Sora conversation. And the one that like I was fascinated about here is Lex asked him about this idea of like, is Sora actually representing the physical world in some way? Is it understanding the physical world? Mm -hmm. um, and so he asked like, you know, about its ability to represent and understand like the 3D model of the world and, uh, and asked whether or not like the current path OpenAI is taking could get to the point where it does seem to really do that. And I thought Sam, you know, he, he, he was very thoughtful in his response, but he said, I, I think this approach is going to go surprisingly far. So again, like we've talked many times, not all the leading AI researchers agree with each other. Like Jan LeCun would not agree with this. Like he does not think this is the path, but Sam seems fairly confident. Um, GPT-4, I, I, I think you had made a note of this one, Mike. Um, Lex said, for me, looking back, GPT-4, ChatGPT is pretty damn impressive, historically impressive. Um, and Sam said, I think it kind of sucks. So, I, you know, I think the, the, the key there is he's, Sam is looking three to five years out on what he is fairly confident will be happening. And then he looks at the current stuff and says, this is obsolete. Like th what we have, yeah, sure. Okay. You might be impressed by it, but we won't be in time. And then that led to the GPT-5 conversation, which Sam was like, I don't even know what we're going to call it, but Lex like, we'll call it GPT-5 just for this. Like, when's it coming out? And Sam said, um, you know, we're not like given a timeline, but I think we had talked previously, I was at episode 87, Mike, the timeline, yeah. like May to July, which seems viable. But then he talked about um, how they're going to be releasing a lot of things in the process. Like there's going to be pieces they're going to kind of release that won't be necessarily gpt5 but kind of build up to it that led to the q star conversation so if people have followed along on the podcast again since last november when sam got fired there was this belief that they had had this scientific breakthrough they were calling q star so episode 74 from november 28th is when we talked about that in detail but this i thought was maybe the most interesting part of the whole interview because lex said uh, this does make me think about the mysterious lore behind q star What's this Q-Star project? Um, and then a few things about nuclear facilities, secret nuclear facilities, and some jokes kind of happen. And then Lex comes back and says, can you speak what Q-Star is? And Sam very abruptly said, we are not ready to talk about that. And Lex kind of pushed him a little bit. He said, yeah, but that's an answer. Or, uh, but an answer like that means there's something to talk about. It's very mysterious, Sam. And Sam said, I mean, we work on all kinds of research. We have said for a while that we think better reasoning in these systems is an important direction that we'd like to pursue. We haven't cracked the code yet. We're very interested in it. And that leads to what, what QSTARs believe to be is some mathematical, some ability for it to do mathematics in new ways that enhances its reasoning. So now why is reasoning important? Like, why does that matter? So reasoning is basically like the cognitive process of thinking, of our ability to think in a logical way, form a conclusion, form a judgment. So reasoning is fundamental to our human intelligence. It lets us analyze situations, figure out new information, um, apply knowledge under different contexts. So if you look at all the things it enables, like in the scientific process, our ability to form a hypothesis about something is because of reasoning. Our problem solving, our ability to reflect on our past experiences and thoughts, like all of that is reasoning. And that is fundamental to system two thinking, which is like the slow thinking. We're going to talk more about that throughout today's episode. This idea of giving these models time to think and analyze and reflect 
And so I think that's really critical. So I'll, I'll, I mean, I thought language models and search was interesting. Regulatory capture conversation was interesting. Mm -hmm. Are there any other ones that jumped out to you, Mike, that I didn't touch on already? No, I think you hit all my greatest hits here. Um, uh, yeah, I did just think we have to just take very seriously when someone like Sam Altman says GPT-4 sucks because they're thinking on such a different scope than yeah. many of us do. And that doesn't mean it's all going to come true was kind of my takeaway. I mean, you know, there's still very real engineering and physics involved. We'll see what becomes real and what is just dreams. But they're imagining a world, and he mentions this. He's like, I think of what happens when we have billions of tokens for context length. Which instead is of the, not, the million that Gemini 1.5 is enabled. Instead of the million that we have that already seems crazy. So very far-flung speculation, but I think it's worth taking seriously that it's not on that big a timeline. So we're talking like five to 10 years, right, Max? Yeah, and I, I think he has a very, very strong history of being directionally correct mm. in what he thinks the world will look like and the timelines that'll happen. Like the quote I often lead my keynotes off with is, um, from his Moore's Law for Everything blog post from March of 2021, in which he says the coming age will you know, focus on our most impressive our human abilities to think, to reason, to understand language. And people didn't listen at that time. So March of 2021, he gave us a year and a half head start um, for when they released ChatGPT and most business leaders weren't paying attention. And I think this is a similar moment. Like they're telling you GPT-4 will not look impressive in retrospect. It will not mm. seem like a significant thing. And keep in mind, they didn't release GPT-2 in 2021 because of concerns of misuse and all the things that could go wrong. So back in 2021, GPT-2 was so advanced for society that they didn't release it right away. And he's already saying GPT-4, which most people are still trying to understand and apply to their mm. business, that it will feel equally as obviously. He said, you know, I think the leap from four to five will feel similar to three to four, where it was like, holy cow, to us, the outsiders, it was mind blowing. He is thinking that, that that will be the case, that we will see five and think, wow, we had no idea it was gonna be capable of these things. And kind of the last point that you hit on perfectly, but I just think it's just so weird and just has my spidey sense tingling. It's just like, there are memes going around to have Ilya on the side of a milk carton. Like, where is he in all yeah. of this? Like the Q star stuff, which was highly related to your point to what you he said. He was one of the yeah. creators of it, supposedly. It's very easy, obviously, to fall into conspiracy theories, which I'm yes. not going to get into. Um, but it is so fascinating, that human element of there is something really important about whatever went down there. And yes. the silence is deafening, I would say. I agree. I, 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 as we said back in November, there's something still much more to this story. And I do think that as they start releasing things throughout this year, we will start to understand a little bit more. But I, I do think that this system to thinking, the reasoning, and there's some other topics we'll cover today that sort of further validate that this is likely going to be very important context to have. So again, I think as a, a listener to this show, if you listen regularly, you're going to hear some recurring themes. And I, I, I just, I mean, like God, back in 2022, I, I interviewed, interviewed Vedant Mishra at, uh, at Macon. I've mentioned Vedant recently, and he's working on reasoning at DeepMind. And back in 2022, when I interviewed him, he was talking about the coming advancements in reasoning capabilities and what that would unlock for these models. So there, I mean, many of the smartest AI researchers in the world are, are working on variations of whatever QSTAR is and whatever um, kind of these advancements are. It was even a hot topic this week with on, um, Andrew Ung, um, mm -hmm. Jan LeCun, other people from the FAIR Research Lab. It's directionally correct. Whatever happens next is going to be in things similar to this.